Good afternoon. My name is Sean Kim, a student taking CS301 just like all of you. Today, I will be showing you what a multi-tape Turing machine is, how it relates to a normal single-tape Turing machine, and how multi-tape Turing machines may be applied to an example. So uh, first things first, what is a multi-tape Turing machine? It is what one would expect, really, a regular Turing machine with several input tapes. What does this actually mean? Well, it means that um, each separate tape of the multi-tape Turing machine has their own head, and each head in the different tapes all have the ability to independently, simultaneously, or somewhere in between read, write, or move. It is, however, notable that a multi-tape a multi-tape Turing machine is no more powerful than a single-tape Turing machine. Now, as you can see down here, I doodled a little example here, but it's incomplete. Like, how do we know what we have to input and what would the output be? Will they both move left? Will they both move right? Or can they both move separately by themselves? Well, we shall see. So how does a multi-tape Turing machine actually work? Well, you can see the formal transition function there, and it looks pretty indiscernible. <laughs> well, to me, it used to. But for a Turing machine that has k tapes, the transition function is derived from the possible state of machine times the possible symbols under the tape heads, so that case the multiple tapes, to transition to the new state of the machine times the symbols to right under the head times the possible directions to move the heads. Everything else stays the same, so essentially we are traversing the Turing machine the same way as we usually do, but now we have to account for the additional tapes depending on the Turing machine itself. All of the tapes may move the head simultaneously or individually, or somewhere between, as I said earlier. So if we looked at this, um, at this doodle I showed you earlier, you can see that the heads are pointing, currently pointing to A and A. So quite possibly, I could have inputs of A and A, and have a transition to B and B, moving both heads to the right-hand side. So. Sipser has, or Sipser writes down Theorem 3.13, which is to prove that multi tape Turing machines have a single tape equivalent. As you can see from this diagram, each of these heads do in fact correspond to a virtual head value on the single tape. So you can see that B in the first tape corresponds to B in the single tape in that first section. If you notice there on the single tape, each section is separated by pound signs, which SIPs are used to help differentiate between each individual tape that has merged into the single tape. The little dots you see above here correspond to the head on each tape where it's currently at. So the second tape, tape head corresponds to one, and the third tape head corresponds to B in the third section. And last, I will show you guys how to, um, well, actually do this in a much more clean manner. <laughs> so as you can see here, I have an actual real example of a Turing machine that I made myself. And as you can see, I have three separate tapes. First one has um, two inputs, 
the second one has three inputs, and the third one also has three inputs. This starts in state one, and as you can see from my steps here, I um, listed down the step for each of the tapes, which is currently at step one, right here. So tape one is currently set to C, tape two is currently set to B, and tape three is currently set to A. This corresponds to CBA. It will transition and change to BAC, and the tape heads will move right for tape one, left for tape two, and right for tape three. So in the next slide, it demonstrates this happening. The heads have all moved corresponding to this. And now we are in state two. And now transitioning from state two to state three, we'll see that B, A, C will become C, A, B, with the heads moving right, then left, then right, corresponding to each tape individually. And now the head for tape one is pointing to a space. The head of tape two is pointing to A, and the head of tape three is pointing to C. So currently in state three, transitioning to state that will back to state two on step four, we will see that blank AC will change to BAC. And the heads will move left, right, and left. And of course, when this happens, as you can see here, the space became B, and a new space was made visible on the infinite tape. Now, what's really important about this is that on the single tape, which has been proven by Sipser, is equivalent to a multi-tape Turing machine. Well, when we change the multi-tape like this, going through the Turing machine, it also changes the single tape itself. Now, normally when we work with a single tape, we can only, well, add things directly to the ends because we have an infinite number of spaces. However, because of the proof, we are able to actually insert that additional B to the end of the first section that represents um, the first tape in the multi-tape Turing machine. And um, going on, we can see that we keep transitioning back to state one eventually. And with state one, we transition BAC, changing, to, well, not changing to BAC, but it's going right left and right to the substate. And at the substate, which we're now finished, we can see that the heads together will spell cab. Yeah, I did that for a little fun, but you know, we're gonna do. And that's really about it. Thanks for watching this presentation and um, I hope all of you have a nice and fulfilling day. Thanks.